Hello everyone. Well, I've done a thing. I bought a new coffee machine I couldn't resist. So, even though I love my La Pavone Europicola, there were a few things that were slightly annoying me and I happened to look online and I saw a second-hand machine and the price was too good and I, in a moment of weakness I went and bought it. So, I guess the thing that I was a little bit unhappy with with the Europicola is the coffee was great, the milk steaming was always a little bit dodgy, it was um, I could steam really well with this uh, single hole um, tip on the steam tip but it was quite slow and I tried this extended tip which was much faster and nicer to use, easier to clean but then I could never get the milk texture quite right. Um, plus Probably the last straw was I actually burnt myself on the machine. Even though I'm careful, um, I still managed to not be quite careful enough one day and that's why I'm looking around. So I've always been interested in these E61 machines. So E61 is talking about the head here, this whole section in the middle which was released in 1961. So what I'm going to do a bit later is I'll draw a process diagram that just shows how it all actually works in this unit. But this is a heat exchanger unit. So it's small, it's appropriate for home. Um, this one is made by Profitech. This is a Profitech Pro 400. It has a PID controller with a little switch on the side here so I can change it to one of three different temperature settings for dark roast, medium roast, light roast or for faster steaming um, and that's mainly it, that's the main controls. What I have also done is I've bought a flow control modification. So this little tap on the top here is for flow control, it's an extra, it cost me $200 extra. Um, so the whole machine, these normally sell for about uh, $2,800 in Australia, these sell for $1,000 in Australia. So it's it's yeah about three times the price but this is really good quality machine everything is really made nicely so I'm very happy with the build quality um, and this flow control normally they're about $400 but this was $200 on sale and it's just a matter of unscrewing this mushroom bolt on the top and screwing the new one in there's also a spring to replace down here but it's very easy install and it comes with a gauge so now I can see the pressure at the head. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a great machine. Um, it also has a pre-infusion function so it can sort of turn the motor on and then off and then on again in a controlled way at the start. But uh, you don't burn yourself. So this bit in the middle is hot but you have no reason to touch that. It's got heaps of steam. This is a four hole steam tip. I think they added that afterwards. So watch this. I can hold on to this. And I don't get burnt. So it's cool tip, which means, you know, when you're making the milk, texturing the milk, you don't get milk sticking to the outside because the outside's just not that hot. Um, same with the hot water tap, it's the same thing. It's um, cold touch. Um, so I think this is a very nice machine and something that would be very appropriate for people who want something slightly better than like a Breville dual boiler, something a little bit prosumer. These are extremely well made. All of the components are all on the outside of the machine so they're easily accessible. Everything is just bolt apart so you can replace all of the seals. Um, this one has a cup holder on top but it also has the overpressure valve right here so you know normally these things come fairly with a high setting but you can reduce it down so that it's about you know nine bar um, it has a water tank here which is about 2.8 liters inside is a boiler that's about 1.6 liters whereas this is about 0.6 I think the professional is about 1.6 and it's 1.4 kilowatt electric heater. This is a one kilowatt. But this one has an insulated boiler. So 
it retains the heat. You can turn it on and just leave it um, without using too much electricity. And it also has an eco mode, so it'll turn itself off if it's been running for a while. Um, yeah, so I'm very happy, very excited with this unit. As far as the coffee goes, uh, I'm still trying to learn, but I, I found the coffee from here is maybe a little blonde than this one. It just seems a bit lighter in colour. It is probably not quite as sweet and it doesn't have quite as much body, but these are larger shots. You know, you can see this is a full size portafilter compared to the little portafilter you get in the La Pavoni. So that has been another frustration is that these ones, the shots are just a little bit too small. Um, now, because it's a heat exchanger unit, one thing you need to do before you do a shot is just to run some water through it. So even though it's got a large water tank, you probably do go through a bit more water than this. It uh, takes a little bit longer to heat up as well. This one's really, you know, eight minutes or so and you're ready to go. This one, it takes about five minutes to get up to pressure, but then it'll take another 10, maybe 15 minutes for all of this head to heat properly. So you could rush and make coffee pretty quick, but to make the best coffee, you need to let it warm up. So um, I'll make a coffee, just so you can see the general process, which is not that surprising. So we'll put the coffee in using an 18 gram shot. As before, you want to distribute it nicely. Okay. There's plenty of room for reasonably tall cups. We've got a short one this time. Okay, so if I just, I might just slow it down a little bit, and turn it on, and it will come up to pressure and then it'll stop. This is pre-infusing and then it goes at full speed. You can turn off the pre-infusion if you want to. Now, if I think it's going a bit fast, I can use the flow control to slow it down. So that's a little bit of what my lever gives me. And we can watch the gauge at the front and see the pressure. That's about it there. Now, because it's a heat exchanger machine, I can actually use steam at the same time as brewing. So that makes for a fast process if you've got a lot of coffees to make. Um, I think I'll need to move it back a little bit so I can actually steam. So I can also flick the switch to the higher temperature switch if I want to steam faster. And it only takes a few minutes to get up to speed. Okay. So what I do when I steam milk is I hold my hand on it until I can't hold it any longer. And then I count another eight seconds and that will be it quite hot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the milk texturing has been really nice. I can't do it when the camera's going so well, but yeah, the milk is good. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'll move the camera around and I'll just show you a little process flow diagram so you can understand how these heat exchanger units work in this. Um, I should say I'm not going to get rid of the La Pavoni. I'm going to use this definitely on holidays because it's so small and easy to carry around. Um, and I'll use it on special occasions if I really feel like I want to get the best out of coffee. Um, I still think they're wonderful machines. Um, yeah, I just had a few little frustrations. So, now I'll show you the process diagram. Okay, so what we have in this machine, we'll start off with a water tank. And from the bottom of the water tank, we have a pump. And then we have a boiler. So we also have in a heat exchanger, we have this big pipe that goes through the middle of the boiler. So the pump actually pumps into there. It also pumps into the water tank, so into the boiler. So this boiler ends up being filled with water. There's actually a level switch. So we'll put it level switch on here which actually controls this valve so that turns on the water to fill this up now on the side we have our e61 head so it's it's a little bit rough but it's something like this kind of shape so, the E61, part of the original design is it uses thermosiphoning to heat the E61 head. So, what we have is a pipe that comes out of this heat exchanger and it goes into the top. And then there's an area in here where it can flow back and it comes out and this gets recycled into the bottom of this tank. So as soon as this starts to have heat inside the boiler, it's going to force liquid just through thermosiphoning around this loop. Okay, so it'll just keep going round and round and round. Now, there's actually a temperature sensor and a PID controller, which makes sure that the boiler temperature is kept at a very precise temperature. So because the boiler temperature is precise and the ambient temperature is you know, pretty much the same in a house, um, it's going to end up with this loop here being fairly precise temperature, fairly repeatable temperature. And after a 10 minutes or so, this whole head, this big chunk of stainless steel is going to heat up hot enough for it to all reach the same temperature. Now, we also have a little valve on the top here, which I've added, which is my flow control valve. And then We have another valve in here. And then we have our shower head here. We've got another valve down here and another valve down here. And this goes to our drip tray. So under here, we have a drip tray. So the cup sits on here. And our porter filter goes on here with the handle, with a little filter inside it. 
and that is most of it. So these valves here, they're all linked to the lever on the machine. So when you lift the lever up, it opens this valve and it also turns on the pump. So the pump will force water through into this chamber, which now has very controlled temperature water because it's been thermosiphoning. And it'll push it through here, through here, through the flow control valve, down through this valve into the head. And it'll come out through your puck into the cup. And when you lift the lever back down, this valve closes, this one opens, and the high pressure that's built up over the puck will first release into this area. And then a moment later, it'll open this valve, which will then release it down to the drain after it's lost a bit of pressure. Um, I've also got a, a pressure gauge on here, which can be replaced for a temperature gauge. So you can see the pressure at the group head. There's another pressure gauge here on the pump, so you can see the pump pressure. And there's usually a pressure gauge on the boiler, so you can see the boiler pressure. We also have an OPV valve, overpressure valve. And this is adjustable to uh, adjust to 10 bars or 9 bars or whatever you want to have, so that if the pump produces more than that amount of pressure, it'll short circuit. It'll go back into the water tank or back into the pump inlet. Um, what else? We have a level switch on here just to tell you if you're running out of water in your water tank. Um, that's mainly it. Yeah, so there's some kind of heater in here and that heater will be connected to a PID controller and that measures the temperature in our boiler and that's what controls it and there's also the three position switch on this Profitec Pro 400 that allows you to have three set point temperatures for the boiler. But that is basically how an E61 head heat exchanger machine works. E61 heat exchanger. Anyway, as usual, <laughs> tell me what you think about the video, tell me if you think this was informative, and if you might even consider getting one of these coffee machines. I think they're wonderful, and I'm looking forward to uh, enjoying many coffees from this machine. So, cheers. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs>